there. What do you need for a really big television spectacular? Well, first of all, you need lights. <laughs> you need beautiful girls. <laughs> you need an orchestra. <laughs> Most of all, we need you. <laughs> Pull them all together. And what have you got? You've got a mess. <laughs> Guests this week, John Please and Lulu. Little ladies and gentlemen, may I say welcome to another edition of Says Les. Get off fatty and let the birds on. <laughs> Firstly, may I thank Yorkshire Television for making this series possible for me, and secondly, to thank the wife and kids for making it necessary. <laughs> I am, of course, delighted to be back with our comedy show. After all, in these dark times, there's nothing <clears throat> like a good laugh. Well, there's nothing like it on this show. <laughs> the man's a bum. <laughs> Since the series of Sesles first started so many years ago, fan letters pour in at a positive trickle. Here's one that arrived this morning. <laughs> Lord Longford. For well, speaking of that, oh, here's one that's just arrived this very minute. Post haste. I'll read it out to you. This is the sort of thing we get, and it's the sort of thing that makes us so proud to be part of show business. It's from Miss Bernice Gosper Pickle of 43 Ointment Row, Gateshead Pier. It reads, Dear Mr. Dawson, for many years I have suffered from acute insomnia. My nights of bed were a restless misery. The bags under my eyes were so big, it looked as if my nose was wearing a saddle. I had the in Prince, Berlin, Beirut, Nepal, Rill, but to no avail. Just like our Gladys, and a nicer body never brought the day. That's very touching. And it goes on to say, but you, Mr. Dawson, have done more for me than any specialist. After watching your show for only five minutes, I couldn't keep my eyes open. <laughs> it makes it so much worthwhile. In court today, Paul Kay reported. It was three months ago today that Leslie Makepeace Dawson was led into Wakefield Crown Court to face seven charges of bigamy, five of murder, and two of parking without light. <laughs> Now, the so-called butcher of Chalkingham Hardy is free, found not guilty on every charge. Still protected by a blanket so the people will not recognize him in his new life, Mr. Dawson sets off to make a fresh start. For Leslie Makepeace Dawson, the three-month ordeal is over. philosopher and critic Lo So Fung Po he say Confucius he rude and ignorant old man but Confucius he have very clever answer 
He say, Knickers. <laughs> Thirty quid. No. Forty quid. No. Fifty quid, that's my final offer. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> 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 Hello, football. First, news of the draw for the third round of the FA Cup. Here are the teams and the draws. Draw, little man of one. Silk. <laughs> Mohair. <laughs> Birmingham City versus Cardiff City. Crystal Palace versus Wrexham. Derby County versus Chester. Oh, Chester. <laughs> <laughs> Oxford United versus Bristol City. <laughs> rhymes with you, know what it rhymes with? Me, one, small one, one, me. Port Vale versus Oldham. And you can hold them all, Bristol, because they're a tie. That's to get. Ooh, with the draw of the chest, you can't go off. You can't go off. Can't take that away from me. <laughs> we sacked the Duke of Northumberland. Victory is ours. Aye. Now that my hat is, what'll it be? Rape or pillage? Rape! 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 Yes! Rape! Right you are then! Ah. Right you are, my hat is! Come out, wench! Yes? <laughs>
I'll tell you something, Lulu. Yes. This is just great having you on the show. Can I join me later, baby? Well, unless you're coming apart. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people don't think I can play the piano. To those critics, may I say, tish poo. <laughs> <laughs> because tonight, I'm going to make the piano talk. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> How's things? All right, thank you. <laughs> We're entirely surrounded, Dawson. Oh. Just you and me left, but we shall not surrender. By heavens, we won't. Let the crowd do his damnedest! Yes. What are they hit, Dawson? The mobile quartermaster's store, sir. Never mind. We shall fight off. By heck, we will. This time, Dawson. The mobile nuffy, sir. Do your damnest, you great clad morons! We're British to a man! We shall never surrender! <laughs> what targets are left for them with it, Dawson? There's only one, sir. The mobile toilets. End of plot one. What a lot of tripe! <laughs> Do you know something? What? <sighs> this place is driving me up the wall. <laughs> Is how you and I have been in this trench now for four years. I think that you and I have been in this trench now for four years. Yes, sir. I like it. This trench now for four years. That's right. <laughs> I was thinking, like, is uh, where was you born? No, no, where were you born? Where were you born? Yes, I was born in Holland Park in London, Wilson. Holland Park. I thought up and perhaps you come from south. No, I thought perhaps you came from the south. I thought perhaps you came from the south. That's right. Back <laughs> oh. I think it's how I've cut one. I think that I've been shot. I think that I've been shot. <laughs> Buddha, he say, may be born under gooseberry bush by the pallid rays of morning sun. Englishmen say, stock bring the baby. Can you tell stock from butter? <laughs> Please, Miss Lowe. I remember you. You're the one who made my dreams come true a few kisses ago. perfume on a Georgian staircase. A snatch of song on a Neapolitan balcony that lingers on the night air. The touch of a hand in a scented bower. The echoing treble of a boy soprano in a hushed cathedral. Laughter that tinkles across a crowded room. These are the things that can evoke nostalgic, bittersweet memories of a lost love. Or rekindle a passion that lay dormant. Something like this happened to me when I first met the maiden who was to become my wife. It was at a corporation cleansing department's dinner dance. <laughs> at the Quarp in Upper Mill. She was stood on her head in a corner, stuffing suet up a vicar's kilt. <laughs> there was something about her, I found it after it was pickled onions. Oh, I know she wasn't much to look at. Nobody danced with her. 
I wouldn't say she was a wallflower, but she was stood in a bucket of bone meal. <laughs> and yet she was the woman who had churned my blood into a cauldron of desire. I remember she had braces on her teeth. Every time she kissed me, she stapled my lips. <laughs> her teeth were in a bit of a mess. She had so many fillings, she had metal fatigue in her gums. <laughs> and her complexion wasn't very nice. She had so many pimples on her chin, her face looked like a box of Lego. <laughs> and yet that night, as I took her in my arms to the lilt of a Strauss polka, I felt a tingle run up my leg. <laughs> she scratched me with her bike clips. I held her close like a snooker rack. I kissed her on the ear and it blew a fuse in her hearing aid. <laughs> she was such fun to be with. The little things. The way she took her skirt in her knickers and... <laughs> hold her head under brewer's yeast and yodel sunny boy. That night I asked her, for a date, she said, I've only got things. <laughs> I said, you can work them. She said, I'll probably work you. <laughs> it's the little things. That night, I, I took her for a meal to a little restaurant. And I've never seen anybody eat so fast. When she drank soup, sailors stood up and she had an abandoned ship. <laughs> They used to put sparking plugs on the cruet. The horse radish was under starter's orders. I took her home in the car towards the, the moonlight shining on the black hulk of the Pennines. I had a little baby car in those days. I called it a baby car, it never went anywhere without a rattle. It wasn't a new car, but it only had one previous owner, Lord Kitchener. We even had a secret passage in the boot. And I looked at her as she slumped that cheroot between her lips. I asked her for a kiss and she shook her head angrily. And I was hurt, so terribly hurt. And then I found that she kept shaking her head all the time. It suddenly dawned on me that her nose was caught in the windscreen wipers. <laughs> Suddenly we stopped for a moment in a lay-by. <laughs> and she said to me, in a very soft, throaty voice, can you drive with one hand? My manhood stirred. <laughs> oh, yes, I cried hoarsely. Oh, yes, my darling. Of course I can drive with one hand. Why? She said, well, wipe your nose, it's running. <laughs> Way back 
Hello, Doctor. Ah, sit down, please. Thank you very much. Now, what's the problem? I've got a headache. Congratulations. When's the little fellow due? <laughs> no, I said I've got a headache. Yes, I heard what you said, my good man. I'm not blind. <laughs> you mean deaf, don't you? <laughs> Certainly not. My eyesight's perfect. 2020. Now, uh, when's the happy event? How long? No, you misunderstand me, Doctor. I'm not having a baby. I've got a headache. <laughs> oh, a headache! Yes. Ah! <laughs> good, good. And whereabouts is it hurt? <laughs> In me head. Ah, oh dear, it's worse than I thought. Well, um, a simple operation should clear this up. Operation? Well, we have to stop it spreading. <laughs> Don't worry, we doctors know what we're doing. C can you give me tablets? Tablets? Yes. Hadn't thought of that. Well, it's not as much fun as an opera. If you, if you want tablets, all right, I'll put you on the pill immediately. <laughs> On the pill? <laughs> yes, uh, just take one after every headache and you'll be perfectly safe. Well, if you say so, Doctor. There we are. Just take that round to the post office and if you want to, you can take, um, take a couple uh, every morning about 20 minutes before you wake up. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time and trouble, Doctor. Oh, hang on. I can give you a lift if you want. I'm going your way. Well, that's very nice. <clears throat> <laughs> What's the matter with your leg? Indigestion. Terrible. Hell of a week. What's the matter? I've sprayed my wrist. <laughs> that somebody's been trading information for food. No. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Says Lynn. Special guest this week, Marion Montgomery. Brenda Arno and John Cleet. boy Bill will be tall and as strong as a tree will he my boy Bill will be all that I want him to be will he my boy Bill he's only seven it was his birthday last Tuesday and that little tousled haired bundle of dynamite with mischief brimming in his ice blue eyes Came into our bedroom at five o'clock in the morning and blew his toy trumpet down my ear. <laughs> Not unnaturally, I leapt out of bed like a startled frog <laughs> and landed heavily on one of his skates. <laughs> Accelerated my progress into the wardrobe from which I received my concussion and a burst lip. <laughs> my boy, Bill. As I tried to get myself up, I slipped on his marbles. <laughs> and a footstool caught me and I lost two fillings. Half stunned, I wandered onto the landing and 
My pyjama cord got caught around the banister rail. <laughs> I was trying to free myself and the cord broke. My trousers came down and I fell down the stairs. As I lay there with my nether regions naked for the world to see, he peppered me with his air gun. <laughs> it wasn't the pain of the pellets in the buttocks that made me shriek in agony. It was the hot tea on my nose when the wife tripped over my legs. <laughs> I nearly got myself to my feet and one of his triumph toys was there and I slipped on it, went into the hall stand and received partial paralysis of the knees. <laughs> Somehow, I, I don't know, with dogged perseverance, I crawled into the bathroom. The wife started to help me to my feet and just then my little lad, his, his pet hamster, ran up the leg. <laughs> she not unnaturally dropped me. I, trying to save myself by grabbing at the towel rail. It came away in my hand and I was showered in pieces of tiles and severely lacerated about the brow. <laughs> I sort of jackknifed into the bath and found myself in an erotic posture with his action man. <laughs> My little lad. Somehow the neighbours got me to bed, I don't know how. But that little lad, he was, he was so upset at seeing his daddy lay there in a semi-coma. And he brought me a dish of soup. As I was drinking the soup, looking at the tears well in his little eyes, the dog was biting my ankle. I said, what's the dog biting me for, son? He said, you've got his dish. <laughs> Just before the show started tonight, I got on the phone. The wife answered it. I talked her out of suicide. <laughs> I said, how's my boy? She said, he's given the three cats next door a pods in the milk. <laughs> pods. I said, I hope the cats are all right. She said, yes, they're in the garden now, the three of them. One's digging holes, one's filling them in, and one's looking at fresh sights. <laughs> my boy. And yet I know that when I go home tonight, and I turn that key in the lock, when he hears it click, He'll come flying down those stairs. He'll jump into my arms. He'll say, hi, Dad. And I'll hold his small, warm, vibrant body. And I'll look at him, and I'll kill him! <laughs> English people often ask me that when I'm in China, do I watch BBC or ITV? <laughs> well, me no telly. <laughs> Spare a copper, mate. I haven't eaten for a week. Force yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, Brenda, Brenda. Be careful, darling. There's a lot of Viking in me. Oh, yes. You've got a face like a Norse. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Do you remember the old Vikeets? Seasons of mist and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the conspiring sun, doth round the eaves do load. <laughs> How prophetic those words, for it is indeed, as you see, autumn, the demise of the year, spring gambled, summer heated our blood. <laughs> and then came the decay of the year, sweet bittersweet autumn, in where the leaves fall from the trees and the branches are stark naked. <laughs> this is the time of the year when all the little furry creatures, <laughs> they're all underground now. They're all snuggled up together. <laughs> the little shrew and the hedgehog and the rabbit, they're all down there, all in a pile. You can't help up from the other. <laughs> You're not going to tell me they're asleep. They're down there, and they're off in his off. Let me in! Let me in! All you sinners that knoweth not the ways of the Lord shall know no rising up of your souls on the day of judgment. You shall remain forever in the blackness of your sins, and no light of day shall cast its sun on your upturned faces. 
Downwards in the blackness of hell shall your souls descend. Downward shall you be taken into the fiery furnace. There the flames dance over your writhing bodies. But if you believe in the Lord, you shall be saved. Your soul shall rise up and look down and scorn on the iniquitous. All the children that believe in the Lord, you shall be saved on the day of judgment. You shall rise up and be made one with your heavenly Father who is waiting for you in heaven now. Billy Ray was a preacher's son When his daddy would visit, he'd come along When they'd gather around, started talking Cousin Billy would take me walking Through the backyard, we go walking Then he looked into my eyes Lord knows to my surprise The only boy who could ever reach me Was the son of a preacher's man The only boy who could ever reach me was a son of a preacher's man, yes he was, he was, oh yes he was. Being good isn't always easy, no matter how hard I try. When he started sweet talking to me, he kiss and tell me everything is all right. Everything is all right Can I get away again tonight? The only boy who could ever reach me Was the son of a preacher's man The only boy who could ever teach me Was the son of a preacher's man Yes, he was He was Good evening. Here is the news. In the ITN newsroom earlier this evening, a dispute arose between two of the newsreaders, Mr. Reginald Hawkins and a Mr. Sandy Smythe, who both insisted that it was their turn to read the news. After a frank and open exchange of views, the two men were separated, and eventually Mr. Reginald Hawkins was allowed to go before the cameras. Mr. Hawkins is the top newsreader on television and one of the outstanding personalities of the electronic world. <laughs> and we've just heard that there is trouble in an ITN news studio. Mr. Reginald Hawkins had gained entrance and was trying to read the news when top reporter Sandy Smythe forcibly removed him in, from in front of the camera. We hope to bring you more about that with pictures later on in the programme. Now for some news regarding... <laughs> Following their visit to Scotland, the Queen... Get off! Get your hands and get it! You... No. <laughs> the Queen said it over...
And now, sport. <laughs> Sir Alf Ramsey has announced that the 1974 World Cup promises to be one of England's greatest victories. <laughs> Sir Alf was later said to be as well as could be expected. <laughs> and some late news here. Following a fight in the ITN newsroom tonight, a Mr Sandy Smythe was taken to hospital suffering from multiple injuries. <laughs> Mr Smythe was 44. <laughs> and some more late news here. We just heard that a top... ITN newsreader is wanted for questioning in connection with the murder of the... Oh, no, oh, yeah. what, what I have on, I don't... I haven't finished right. Help! 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 Pretty I've rigged. fought for that! <laughs> no level! Good evening. This is the news. <laughs> Following the arrest... <laughs> Confucius, he say, dinner is served. <laughs> Lady pig. <laughs> you little fatty! You've been in the same position now for four years. Do you realize that? Four years waiting for the enemy to make their big push. It's waiting, always waiting. It's the waiting that drives you mad. You know that, Dawson? Mad, waiting, waiting, always. Always waiting. It's driving me. <laughs> Get out of me, Dawson! Mad! Always waiting! I can't stand it! I can't stand it anymore! I tell you! Shut up, Dawson! Yes, sir. <laughs> Waiting to get you down. <laughs> it gets hold of you. <laughs> and it drives you insane. Who the hell's that? Oh, him. He's the rape instructor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Marion Montgomery.
lot of fun is poked at the medical profession, but I have a great respect for doctors. I went to our local doctor the other week, I walked in the surgery, I said, can you help me out? He said, certainly, which way did you come in? <laughs> He said, what's the problem? I said, well, quite frankly, I, I don't sleep very well. We've bought a new Danish quilt and I can't seem to sleep and he keeps slipping off the bed. I said, I just can't get to sleep. He said, tell me, are you having strange erotic sexual dreams? I said, no. He said, what a pity I get belters. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, whatever the ills you have, a doctor will cure it. the doctor in uh, yet? No, not yet. I'm... Oh. I'm, wait... I'm waiting for him. <laughs> Excuse me for asking you this. Don't think I'm being rude. Hmm? You've got a paper bag on your head. What? Oh, this! This, yes! Don't think I'm being nosy. <laughs> but why have you got a paper bag on your head? Oh, well, I have a, a morbid dread of uh, not having a paper bag on my head. <laughs> uh, that's what I come to see the doctor about. Oh. <laughs> Morning. Well, I'm it's Moby Dick. <laughs> Good morning. Lovely day. Yes, for the time of the year. Um, have you hurt yourself? No. <laughs> well, why are you on your stomach? I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> Skin diving. <laughs> I am afraid of breathing in germs from the atmosphere. <laughs> You're mad! Absolutely mad! Morning. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, oh, parrots. <laughs> I'm scared of them. <laughs> but you've got one on your head. I'm no. Coward! <laughs> You're all insane! You're on the twist! This is something out of a nightmare! Doctor, doctor! He'll sort this lot out! If you go away on a summer day, you might as well take the summer way. If you go away, if you go
just heard from HQ, Dawson. We're entirely surrounded, but they're going to give us sixpence for every German we kill. Oh, that's very good, sir. Marvellous. Well, dollar now, sir, but there's 50,000 pounds coming over the hill. <laughs> sixpence. Two shillings. One and six. Two shillings. Two and six. Three shillings. Three and six. Dawson. Yes, sir? Money isn't everything. No, sir. <laughs> 